Hi everyone, I welcome you all in a new video tutorial. This time we will learn how to design a steel loop press for warehouses, parking lots and markets. Before that, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to it and press the bell icon so you can be notified on my next uploads. So the steel trusses are usually designed when you need a clear and free space without any intermediate columns in between. So you can move or place various things. If you make the same arrangement with RCC construction, the structure will become highly uneconomical and that's the reason the steel loop trusses are widely used in industrial buildings and warehouses to support large length beams without providing an intermediate support. So there are many steel trusses shapes you might have studied in your course of theory of structures, but depending upon the spin size, mostly king post, coin post, double hoe, ono pitch are mostly used. Again, being a designer, it is your job to go for the already available shapes which are built and tested by many engineers around the globe, or you want to develop your own design or shape. In this video, I will model the roof truss for an area of 15 meters by 24 meter. So the truss is always placed along the shorter spin. As I discussed, depending upon the spin size, we can choose shape of the truss from the available designs. If your shape is up to 6 meters, then we must choose king post considering the economy of the structure. If the spin ranges from 6 to 15 meters, we can go for whole triangle 4 panel. For 12 to 4 meter, Four triangle six panel truss comes out to be economical. Since our truss is placed along the shorter dimension and our shorter dimension is 15 meters, so we will choose whole triangle six panel truss for our design. The modeling of truss is considered easier compared to the modeling of RCC structures. In ETABS, you just need to model front truss and replicate the truss to the entire length of the floor area. So in this tutorial, you will also learn the power of mirror and replicate tools. To design a truss, we need to model four basic parts, which are truss itself, columns, purlins, and the roof sheeting. So first is the truss, which is placed along the shorter direction of the roof area. Second is the column, which supports the truss. Third is the purlin, which runs along the longer direction. And the fourth is roof sheeting, which are supported by the purlins, which covers the truss from the top. So we will design the steel roof truss using IS800. So let's begin. Open an ETEPS model. To create a new model, click New Model. Choose use built in settings and from here choose metric SI units and select Indian code from steel section data and choose IS800 for steel design code and IS456 for concrete design code and press OK. Now, here we need to provide grid spacing since our truss floor area is 15 meter by 24 meter so we will be needing three grid lines in x direction and spacing between these two grid lines should be 7.5 meters for y axis our floor area is 24 meter so that means we will be needing seven lines considering a four meter spacing between two separate grid lines for a story, we will be needing two stories. One would be the open ground story and the other will be the story which is supporting the truss. So we must keep in mind that we do not bury the columns in the ground as we do for the RCC columns. So for truss, we always provide a separate column blocks and arrangement for footing. So footing story would not be encountered here. So bottom story height is considered as 6 meters. And we will keep our truss height as 1.5 meters. Click OK. So 
so I'm considering the default material properties I'm not going to change the material property so first let's define the section so in order to define the section we need to go through the section properties and then frame sections from here we need to click import new properties first we need to define the property for the steel column so I will choose I section so for I section I will always recommend to go for the higher section so if it is passing then we can choose accordingly so since I am considering this 225 click OK and similarly for the purlins we will consider the hollow steel sections so let's suppose I am considering the this one ISB 96 into 48 now we have decided our section for the columns for the purlins as well as now we need to decide for the truss itself so import a new property for beams we need to define angle section so as you can see we do not see any angle section here so we will choose from here so from here we will choose steel steel angle and click ok and choose any one dimension of your requirement so let's suppose I am choosing this one 75 into 75 by 10 so click OK since we are done with uh, defining our section now we will assign the section so, so first we will draw the beam so for beam we will choose an L section For drawing the beam, we will switch it onto the 3D mode. So it should be like this. Since our design is Right, you can also draw it by switching it to you can also draw it you can also in fact you can also draw the truss by switching it in the into the elevation mode so say our design is O6 triangle so what we do we will try to divide this object into three parts so in order to divide what we have to do go to the edit menu edit frames divide frames we need to divide this into three equal parts so click apply and ok so as you can see our frames are divided into three parts so from here we will choose again the L section so what we do So we will design further elements of our truss. Now we need to trim these lines. So in order to trim these lines, you need to select it. Go to the edit menu again, edit frames, divide frames, and click break at intersection with the selected frames and joints. Click OK. As you can see, we, now we can trim the extra portion of the beams. Again, choose the L section. Now divide these into the number of triangles. So our first portion of the truss is almost ready. Now we will switch it to the plan mode.
now we will apply the position of columns okay click one story from the bottom press the column here choose the desired section from the property dialog box and place the column put it on the 3d mode as you can see your first part of the dress is almost ready so what we do now we will select all the sections except this portion now we will be replicating this portion along the right hand side of the stretch so for this we need to again switch it on the plan mode okay so go to the edit menu choose replicate so we need to mirror this object Click these two points, click apply, so position of the truss is fine, so click OK. So as you can see, So within a single click we have completed the front portion of the truss. Now what we do, we will select all the members and try to replicate the front portion of the truss along this length of the floor area. So for this first we need to select the whole area. After that we can, uh, we also know the distance between two grid lines is 4 meters. So go to the edit menu, again replicate. So we need to replicate along the y dimension in a 4 meter direction. So number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6, click apply. And click OK. So as we have successfully modeled the two parts of the truss, which are truss itself and the columns, now we will model the purlin part. To model the purlin, we need to take care that the distance between two purlin should not be more than one meter. The reason is as the roof sheets are supported by these purlins and they are not able to take much bending. So if the span is higher, the bending will also be higher. So first we will check the length of this inclined member. So as you can see the length is 2.54 meter. So if we divide this inclined member into three equal parts, so we will be able to satisfy the 1 meter criteria for the purlin. So in order to divide it into 3 equal parts, you select all these inclined members. Go to edit menu, select edit frames and from edit frames click divide frames. And choose 3 or write 3 here and click apply. And OK. To quickly draw the purlins, so what we do, we will go to the line section. From here, we will choose a property of box. Now, again, press escape or select this uh, icon from. Now, choose the intersection point where these inclined members have been divided into three equal parts. So you have to do the same on the other side as well. So as we have selected all the joints, now go to the edit menu and select extrude and from there extrude joints to frames. Now we know that our dy dimension is 4 meter, so press 4 here and the number in this box we need to press the number of spin so there are one two three four five six spins so just type six here and click apply and you can see within seconds we have drawn all the purlins along the length of the floor area so click ok so as we have successfully modeled three parts of the truss now, the only one part which is remaining that is sheeting.
to model the sheeting what we have to do we have to select these elements So once we are done with selecting these elements, so once we are done with selecting this element, go to the edit menu. Now select extrude and from there you choose extrude frame to shields again in dy direction we have got 4 meter spin the number of spins are in order to verify we can also count 1 2 3 so there are 6 spins long y direction so click apply So as you can see within single click we have modeled the sheeting on the purlins. So if you observe that this is a CC sheeting but in real life these sheets are not made of cement concrete. They are either galvanized iron sheets or abastus concrete sheets. So to depict the exact scenario what we have to find we need to find the exact thickness of the sheets. So let's consider we are providing the concrete abastus sheet as a roofing. So since these sheets do not take any bending loads so we will replace the sheets by a membrane slabs to provide the exact thickness what we have to do we need to refer the codes in order to find the weight of this abstract sheet so for this let's refer to the code so from the code as you can see on the number 9 we are cement sheeting so we will choose corrugated pitch of 6 uh, millimeter thickness and from there we can find the weight is 0 0.118 to 0 0.130 so we will be choosing the maximum weight so it is 0 0.130 so in order to find the thickness so what we need to do is so we need to divide this value by, load by the density of the concrete so it will give us around 5.5 millimeters so now go to the uh, define menu from there choose section properties go to the slab sections slab 1 modify show properties from here you choose select 5.5 meters and as I told you this sheeting will not take any bending load so choose membrane from there and click OK So by doing this now we have successfully modeled the real abstract sheet. So, so once we are done with the modeling part of this roof first now we will apply the loads. To assign the loads on the roof again we need to refer to the building codes for the live load. So let's refer to IS875 part 2. Here you will see table 2 which tells you about the imposed loads on the various types of roofs. roofs. So on this you can see if your slope of the truss is above 10 degrees so you can use within the 10 degrees so you can use 1.5 kN per meter square of your life load. So if the slope is greater than 10 degree then you, you need to use this formula that means you need to for the roof membrane sheets or purlin 0.75 kN per meter square less than 0.02 kN per meter square for every degree increase in a slope for example if the inclination of your truss or of your roof is 12 degrees so what you need to do you need to make 0.75 minus 0.2 multiplied by 2 because, because there is increment of 2 so in our case the slope is around uh, the slope is around 11.7 to 11.9 so what we do 0 
minus 0 0.02 and 11.75 minus 10 it will give us 1.75 so it will comes out to be around 0 0.72 clo newton per meter square so what we will do we will select all the members select object type floors go to the sign menu shear loads uniform from here choose live and just type 0.72 kN per meter square and click apply now we will apply the lateral loads so to apply the lateral loads go to the define menu load patterns now here choose EQX select the seismic from the type of loading so IS it's 93 2016 and similarly we need to do the same in Y direction as well it's new now we will change the parameters select X from direction and eccentricity I am leaving uh, all these as it is you can choose here three reduction factor and these data can be so these data can be extracted from the code books you can refer to my previous videos where the way I have demonstrated how you can extract the data from the codes so click OK again you need to do the same on the Y direction but you need to choose the direction and eccentricity but you need to check the direction and eccentricity as Y rest of the things are same and type 3 here now we need to also apply the wind load so wind I'm just applying in the X direction because we don't have any walls in Y direction so what we will do we will just apply in wind X direction click wind here again for wind load we will be using uh, IS X75 click modify lateral load exposure from the shale objects so I'll be designing for the 50 miles per hour rest of the things are same click OK so in order to assign the wind forces so let's see the behavior of wind if the slope of roof is less than 20 degrees so the wind will try to move both the faces in upward drive upward direction that means it will try to apply the pulling action if the slope of roof is more than 20 to 25 degrees so you can see the wind will try to push the windward side and it will try to pull the leeward side since since in our case the uh, slope of roof is between 11.5 to 12 degree so that means we need to apply the forces in upward direction so let's see how to do this Wind side and windward side so this will be the windward side and leeward side so first we need to select all the slabs We need to select these slabs one by one.
go to assign menu share loads wind pressure coefficients <clears throat> so windward side is 0 0.80 this value is again taken from the code so wind force is as you can see are directing upwards so we can also so we have to do the same on the other side of this truss so rotate a bit Go to sign menu, share loads, spin pressure coefficients. Now select the leeward side and put 0.5 here and click apply. So, as we have assigned the loads, now before analyzing this model, we will give the fixed support condition to which support. So, for this, go to the plan mode, select best, and click OK. Select all the joints, go to sign menu, click joints, restraints, and press this icon. Click apply, then OK. Now run the analysis. Okay, before running the analysis, we have to define the load combinations. For load combinations, I am using the default design combinations for the steel design. So from here, you have to choose the design type as our design type is steel so i'll be choosing this steel frame design click ok so e tabs by default will give us all the combinations from the code so we need to define the code individually so click ok now run the analysis So as our analysis is complete, so whether to check whether we applied the correct loads or not, so we need to go to the deform shape. So select the deform shape. From here, choose the dead load case. Click the wire shadow and click apply. So yes, our uh, structure is deflecting downwards. So that means. It is behaving well under the dead loads cases. Similarly, for the EQX, yes, it is fine. For EQY, it should deflect on the rear side of uh, the building. Wind X, yes, it's fine. So click OK. Now we will. So let's see the forces in the member of truss. So in order to see the force, we need to click the force display button. So under the dead load category, we will be looking for the axial forces. So click axial force and then click apply. So now switch it on the elevation mode. So let's see how the behavior of forces along the one elevation. So as you can see, 
our columns and the beams are under completion and our the beams at the bottom are in tension. So this shows the correct behavior of the first. So that means our verse is behaving well against the loadings which we have applied. So let's see whether it is happening throughout the length of the truss or not. So yes, the which traces are seen along the length of the section. So normally the truss is an axial member, but here you can see we will also get a moment diagram because ETABS has considered the joints as fixed, but in actual they are considered as pin. So in order to they are considered as pin. So as you can see that so as you can see that if we switch to the moment diagram, so we will get to change the scale make it even smaller now switch it to the elevation mode So now you can see the moments and the torsos, but in actual the truss is in designed as an axial member. So what you have to do, you need to release the moments. We'll design this section. So for a steel design, either you choose this icon or you go to the design menu. From here you select steel design frame select design combination so by default all the steel design combinations are taken on this side so click ok and then just click this icon so as our design is complete so as you can see majority of sections in a trash component are failing so that means what we have to do now, we have to choose the bigger section, the heavier section in order to avoid the failure. So to do this, to do this, what we have to do, we have to unlock the model first. Now I will choose the heavier sections. So to choose the heavier sections, what we have to do, go to the select menu. From here, click properties and frame sections. So our I sections were failing, which was of the size 75 so they are being selected click close go to the sign menu again go to the frame section section property now i will choose the heavier section which is 200 by 200 by 25 click apply so again run the analysis Click the steel frame design icon. Yes. Now so let's check whether our components are passing or failing. So to do that, we need to click verify all member passed. Yes, all the steel frames passed the steel capacity. So as you can see the majority of our columns lies in a blue or green color. So let's see what does it indicate. So this means that you need to go to the design display info and after that you need to choose PM ratio colors and values. So click apply. So that means 
this column is carrying only 22 percent of the load which is coming so that means it has uh, almost got 80 percent capacity so since we have chosen the bigger section so now what we will be doing we will be choosing the smaller section in order to maintain the economy and similarly and that and in a similar way we can also change the sections of the uh, beams and purlins so let's see how to do this again unlock the model so previously we have chosen 550 size of the column now we will be choosing another so go to the define menu section properties frame section import new property click i section so previously we have chosen 550 so now i will be choosing white fluid section as 400 click ok and go to the select menu select now we have to replace the previous section by the newer section the previous section was 550 go to assign menu click frame section section property and choose the new section which is 400 click ok and I can run the analysis Let's run the design again. Now check the PM ratio. Now it is utilizing the 43%. Again, uh, Again, we will select the smaller section, and in this way, we will be coming up with the economical design of this steel truss. So now let's choose uh, the even smaller section. Now let's choose the smaller section. So again, go to the define menu, section properties, frame sections, import new property, click I section. Now previously we have chosen 400, so now I will be choosing uh, 225, click OK, select properties frame section, so select 400 and replace by 200. Two twenty five, yes, apply and okay. Now click the design again. So now you can see we have sh now you can see we have shifted from the blue color to the yellow color. So let's check how much percentage of the load is this column carrying. 
so now it is 75 percent so in this way what we have to do we have to uh, and if you see that some members are also filling so we can also change the design of these sections as well in this way by trial and error method you can choose the economical design of your truss so this is how the steel roof trusses are designed in actual field now the important part in these steel trusses are the connections so i'll be discussing about the connection in our next lectures before that let's see how in this model will look like in a 3d So if you switch it on the 3D, you will see but physically this model looks fine. So this is how we model the steel roof trusses. So guys, this brings to the end of today's tutorial find this tutorial useful please do like and share and if you have any doubt you can comment in a comment section for upcoming tutorial videos please do subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so you can be notified on my next uploads thank you and have a nice day